In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. There's a beautifully comforting line in the second reading today where the author of Hebrews says that God is not ashamed to be known as our God. So brothers and sisters, whatever sinfulness might be weighing on, a, on us this morning, the burdens and challenges of life that we face, we know this, God is not ashamed to be our God. And so we beg him for every mercy that we need and the strength to follow him more closely. Lord Jesus, you had absolute faith in your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you had the courage of your faith to die for us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to eternal life through faith, hope, and love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, <clears throat> taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call you our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts 
the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A first reading from the Book of Wisdom. The night of the Passover was known beforehand to our fathers, that with knowledge of the oaths in which they put their faith in, they might have courage. Your people await the salvation of the just and destruction of their foes. For when you punish our adversaries, and this you glorify us when you had summoned, for in secret, the holy children of the good were offering sacrifice and putting into effect with one accord the divine intuition, the word of the Lord. Exalt you just in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Bless the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he has chosen for his own inheritance. Bless the Preserve them in spite of famine. Bless the our hope in you.
reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, faith is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Because of it, the ancients were well attested. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out, not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he sojourned in the promised land as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and maker is God. By faith, he received power to generate even though he was past the normal age, and Sarah herself was sterile. For he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands of the seashore. All these died in faith. They did not receive what had been promised, but saw it and greeted it from afar, and acknowledged themselves to be strangers and aliens on earth. For those who speak thus show that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land from which they had come, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better homeland, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he was prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac, descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belongings and give alms. Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out, an inexhaustible treasure in heaven that no thief can reach nor moth destroy. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Gird your loins and light your lamps and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding 
ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and prudent steward whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom the master on arrival finds doing so. Truly, I say to you, the master will put the servant in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk, then that servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour and will punish the servant severely and assign him a place with the unfaithful. The servant who knew his master's will but did not make preparations nor act in accord with his will shall be beaten severely. And the servant who was ignorant of his master's will but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating shall be beaten only lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. As I was going over the readings and, uh, you know, reading them to prepare my homily, the reading that jumped out at me was that second reading, the reading from the letter to the Hebrews. That reading was about faith and magic. There's a story about two boys who went into a candy store to get some candy. And they bought some penny candy and went out of the store. And the one boy said to the other, look here. And he opened up his pocket and there were three candy bars in there. He said, I took those when the clerk wasn't looking. <laughs> and the other boy said, if you wanna see some real magic, come back into the store with me. So they both went back into the store and the other boy said to the clerk, would you like to see a magic trick? And the clerk kind of looked and said, well, yeah, I guess so. And the boy said, well, give me a candy bar. And the clerk gave him a candy bar and he stood there, unwrapped it and he ate it. And then he said, now give me one more. And the clerk gave him another candy bar. He unwrapped it and he ate that one. And he said, just one more. 
And the clerk gave him the third candy bar, and he unwrapped it and ate that one too. And then he told the clerk, that's the trick. <laughs> and the clerk looked at him in dismay and said, well, where's the magic? And he said, see that guy over there? If you look in his pocket, you'll see the three candy bars that I just ate. <laughs> But I wonder sometimes if we ever sit in church right here at Holy Spirit, especially when we are burdened in trouble, and if we wonder, where's the magic? And I'm not talking about the kind of magic with the magician and with the beautiful assistant who makes rabbits appear out of nowhere. Our worship should not be that kind of spectacle. But when we come into church, there should be a sense of expectancy. We should expect that this day, we are going to come into the presence of God. Our faith should be manifested and our trust in God should shine forth. The writer of Hebrews tries to define the meaning of faith and it is clear he believes in the magic of faith. And he says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Then the writer shows us faith in action. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. The writer turns to the first chapters in the Bible. The earth was a formless wasteland and darkness covered the abyss. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And that writer goes on to explain to us how the universe was formed. Then the writer goes on and talks about Cain and Abel. And he tells us that Abel's offering was more acceptable than Cain's because of Abel's faith. Then he recounts Enoch and Noah, Abraham and Isaac, Jacob and Joseph, Moses, and even the harlot Rahab. The writer shows us the importance of faith in all their lives. And this isn't just in the reading we had today, but in that whole chapter. And if you have a chance, read it. The writer then adds the names of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets. And these people who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, set the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword. Hebrews chapter 11 is a stirring chapter filled with the magic only God can perform. We read about Abraham who obeyed God's command to go out even though he did not know where he was going and to a place where God told him he would later receive his inheritance. And by faith, 100-year-old Abraham and his 99-year-old wife Sarah came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. Only magic God can perform. And this magic can only be seen through the eyes of faith. Faith is not only belief that God exists, but that God is present with us and working in our best good. There was a writer named Max Lucado, and he spent a week in Brazil with the missionary who was also a pilot. And this missionary had a four-seater 
old raggedy plane. And he flew a circuit of remote towns in this plane. And Lucada thought that the plane would crash in the jungle and he would be eaten by piranhas or swallowed by an anaconda. So he was sitting there in this plane tense and he was squirming and the pilot told him, we won't face anything I can't handle. You might as well trust me to fly the plane. And we've probably seen the bumper sticker, God is my co-pilot. That is the kind of faith described in Hebrews. God tells us, you might as well let me fly the plane. Respected priest and writer Henri Nguyen became friends with a group of trapeze artists. And the flyer, the one on the trapeze that swings back and forth and does somersaults and all kind of tricks up there in the air, told him that the public thinks that he is the great star of the trapeze. But he tells him the real star is the catcher. He has to be there with split second precision and grab me out of the air. A flyer must fly and a catcher must catch. The flyer must trust with outstretched arms that his catcher will be there for him. In a time of crisis, when we are flying through the air, troubled and worried, God is there waiting to catch us. Faith is not only belief that there is a God, faith is also absolute trust that God cares for us and is always working for our best good. There's a teacher named Ron Butterfield, and Ron taught a class of mentally impaired teenagers. But Ron was exceptional because he looked at his students' capabilities rather than their limitations. And he taught them how to play chess, restore furniture, and he taught them small appliance repair. But most of all, he taught them to believe in themselves. Then one day, a student named Bobby bought in a broken toaster under one arm and a half a loaf of bread under the other. And faith is like that. Don't bring a toaster in for repair if we don't have the faith to bring a loaf of bread. Faith is also living in obedience to God's will. Faith in God is much more than simply saying, I believe. In the letter to the Hebrews, we read about the victories that were won and the persecutions that were endured. A list of people who put their lives on the line through their faith and through their convictions about God. Faith is a life-changing choice to walk where God would have us go. Faith is that unshakable trust. Faith keeps us going through life's dark and difficult valleys. And we all walk under a dark shadow at some time in our lives. We all get discouraged at some time, but we don't give up. There's always a way out if we allow God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to guide us. Faith is the assurance that God who created us is with us in every battle we may face. Again, it is that unshakable trust in God. Faith is, as Abraham put it, there is a city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. 
He's talking about heaven. And we speak far less about heaven than our mothers and fathers. For many people, we are in a secular society. Their kingdom is here and now. No wonder there is so little joy in the world and so much violence. So many people fear the process of aging. All you have to do is watch TV and look at all the commercials for anti-aging pills, anti-aging creams and lotions. They even offer surgery to make you look younger. So many people are haunted by the fear of dying. So where is the magic? The magic, the magic that only God can perform takes place at every mass on this very altar. The bread and wine are changed into the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Where's the magic? That is true magic that only God can perform. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as people of faith, we dare to proclaim what we believe. I believe in God, and the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, uh, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints and the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. And as people of faith, we turn to our God and we ask him to hear and answer our prayers. For Pope Francis, Bishop Perez, Father David, and all priests, that they may use their positions to benefit the people in their charge. We pray to the Lord. Lord For our civic leaders on the local and national level, that their laws and their lives be an inspiration to all citizens by reflecting right reason and divine revelation, we pray to the Lord. all parents, that they may exercise their authority in such a way that their children may grow in love and respect, we pray to the Lord. Lord For all caregivers, that they may always see the people in their charge as persons, not things to be manipulated, we pray to the Lord. For leaders of nations, that they may come to know the value of peace and justice, we pray to the Lord. For all believers, that they may strive to emulate Jesus' style of exercising power 
by seeking to serve, not to be served. We pray to the Lord. For all who have died among our own family and friends, that they be raised up to the glory of God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. And for the people of Holy Spirit Parish, we pray to the Lord. Almighty God, we turn to you in all of our needs because we believe that you, your only desire for us is for our good. We ask you to hear these prayers and to fill us with your graces and blessings through Christ our Lord. Amen.
just to see you, to behold you as my king. I want to be where you are. Peace is where you are. Joy is where you are. Love is who you are. Brothers and sisters, let us pray that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set us over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and to forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and leave us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Now let us share with one another.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray.
May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to glorify the Lord by the way we live our life. Thanks be to God.